Pandemic politics. I'm Michael Smirkanish in Philadelphia. The COVID-19 pandemic has taken the lives of nearly a million Americans and has had profound impact on how we live, how we work, travel, go to school, and our mental health. Two years on, it's now being used to shape the midterm elections in ways that are inconsistent and downright hypocritical. Consider the border. From early on, the pandemic has been used as the reason to keep the borders closed. In March of 2020, under President Trump, the CDC first invoked Article 42, a health emergency measure allowing the quick expulsion of migrants who could, theoretically, be bringing in a communicable disease. But the Biden administration has kept Title 42 in place even long after the widespread availability of a vaccine. Now, under pressure from progressives and immigration activists, it's scheduled to be lifted on May 23rd, but many Republicans and several leading Democrats are opposing that change. This week, a bipartisan group of senators introduced a new bill to keep Title 42 in place called the Public Health and Border Security Act of 2022. Six Republicans were joined by five Democrats, Kirsten Sinema and Mark Kelly of Arizona, Maggie Hassan of New Hampshire, John Tester of Montana, and Joe Manchin of West Virginia. Two of the co-sponsors, Kelly and Hassan, face tough re-election fights. Other Senate Democrats who have spoken out against lifting Title 42 include Mark Warner of Virginia, Catherine Cortez Masto of Nevada, and Raphael Warnock of Georgia. Cortez, Masto, and Warnock are also up for re-election this year. Notable is how rarely we hear the issue of public health in the debate over Title 42. Manchin and Tester are among the only lawmakers to mention COVID in their advocacy. Instead, this is largely a debate about immigration, not public health policy. Ask yourself this, is Texas Governor Greg Abbott threatening to bus migrants to Washington, D.C. because he's worried about the spread of disease, or is he sounding an alarm about porous borders? Many Republicans lobbying to keep Title 42 in place are simultaneously pushing for the end of mask mandates, presumably because the pandemic has passed. And many Democrats apparently agree that the risk of COVID has diminished such that asylum seekers no longer be deterred, but at the same time argue that the pandemic still necessitates giving relief to those who owe money for student loans. This week, the Biden administration announced that it's extending a moratorium on federal student loan payments, interest, and collections until August 31st, as well as a reset for the roughly 7 million borrowers who are already in default. Democrats who say the COVID-related border restrictions need to end are arguing that loan forbearance needs to continue due to COVID. That's not consistent. And Republicans who say we need to keep border restrictions tied to COVID argue that loan forbearance tied to COVID is unnecessary. That's not consistent either. The Wall Street Journal looked at hypocrisy on just one side of the aisle when noting this. President Biden has used the pandemic to justify doing by fiat what he can't pass through Congress, including his eviction moratorium and vaccine mandate. And now his administration is effectively canceling student debt on the installment plan. It went on to point out that the pandemic loan pause has already cost taxpayers an estimated 100 billion plus, and the new extension will add another 15 to 20 billion. And with everybody back to work who wants to work, when will there ever be a better time for those who owe to resume making payments? And what about those who met their obligations? Does anyone else remember the angry Iowa father who confronted Elizabeth Warren on the campaign trail back in January of 2020? My daughter's getting out of school. I saved all my money. She doesn't have any student loans. Am I going to get my money back? Of course not. So you're going to pay for people who didn't save any money, and those of us that did the right thing get screwed. Look, here's what's missing. Consistency. If you think the pandemic conditions no longer warrant slowing immigration, then it follows that student loan payments can also return to normal. But if you believe the pandemic requires continued denial of those seeking asylum at the border, then logically we need to provide those who owe on student loans some added time. Please show me the politicians who apply that sort of critical thinking instead of ideology. 
I want to know what you think. This hour, go to my website at Smirconish.com, answer this week's survey question. Should President Biden fulfill his campaign pledge to forgive at least $10,000 per student loan borrower? Joining me now to discuss the student loan pause is higher education expert Beth Akers. She's a senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute and the co-author of Game of Loans, as well as the author of Making College Pay. Dr. Akers, you know the administration says, look, these people are suffering and they need additional slack. What are your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are that's pretty much a flat out lie. What we know about student debt that might be surprising to people who don't follow this professionally is that the people with the biggest balances are actually rich people. 60% of student debt is held by the top 40% of the income distribution. This is not a poverty alleviation measure. This is not even a targeted subsidy to people who are struggling economically. This is just a flat out giveaway to people who they need in the upcoming midterm elections. I have a chart that I think makes your point. Catherine, put that up. Uh, doctors and lawyers get most forgiveness from the pause. There it is. I, logically, though, when you think about it, well, of course, doctors and lawyers get the most forgiveness. Doctors and lawyers owe the most money. Why? Because their education is extended. I mean, for me, it was four years of college and then three years of law school. Exactly. So the media used to portray people with student debt as the barista making your coffee in the morning. Maybe they're living at home in their parents' basement. That's totally a mischaracterization of what's happened here. A lot of people have very small balances, and the people who have really big balances are these very big earners. So but Dr. if you thought Dr. about Dr. it Akers, like... I'm not, but but I'm not necessarily agreeing with you. I'm recognizing that the bulk of the debt may be with people like myself who extended their education, but just because somebody went to law school or med school doesn't mean they've got the scratch to be paying that debt off. Yeah, great point. So we talk about these borrowers like they're up a creek without a paddle. The truth is we already have in place a forgiveness program that allows borrowers who are struggling to make reduced monthly payments, even can be reduced to zero if they have very low income. So that's missing from the conversation because it's not politically convenient. Um, it makes it sound like we really do need these sort of widespread, non-targeted measures when in fact we already have something in place that with some tweaks could work really well to help these borrowers who do get left behind. There's no way this is the final pause, right? Politically speaking now, August 31, come on, it's Labor Day, it's the start of the midterm, you know, final stretch. Surely this is going to get put off yet again beyond the 2022 midterm, right? I'd say for sure. So Biden is kind of in a sticky spot because he promised $10,000 of loan cancellation during his campaign. It's my read, based on things he said, that he doesn't want to do that. He could do it through executive action, though it's somewhat questionable legally, but he could if he wanted to. I don't think he wants to. And I think that what he's doing now is kicking the can down the road on that issue to maintain support from the progressive wing of his party as we go into midterms. So here, here's the, can we put that tweet up that she's making reference to? I think it was from March of 2020. This is then candidate Joe Biden in the, the heat of the campaign. Additionally, we should forgive a minimum of $10,000 per person on federal student loans as proposed by Senator Warren and colleagues, young people, and other student debt holders bore the brunt of the last crisis. It shouldn't happen again. And Dr. Akers, let me just show you quickly. Uh, Jen Psaki was asked about this exact issue this week. Here's what she said. I don't have any update on that. And I would note that, again, he would encourage Congress to send him a bill uh, canceling $10,000 in student debt, something that he talked about uh, looking forward to signing on the, on the campaign. Yeah. So it sounds to me like the White House position is bring us that uh, legislation and we will sign it. But he wants Congress's buy in as well. Where's that going? It's my survey question of the day. Where is the cancellation issue going? 
if Democrats had wanted this to happen in Congress, it would have happened already. Biden knows that they don't have support in Congress to make this happen. So I think he's sitting quite comfortably in saying, yeah, bring this to me in legislation and I'll happily sign it. And he knows it's going nowhere. He did make this promise, but about a year ago in a town hall event, he spoke really candidly about this. Someone asked, are you going to do this? And he said, you mean and give money to those Harvard and Yale and Penn graduates who borrowed to go get their fancy education? And I think that really revealed what he was thinking, which is this is a regressive program. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And maybe he said it because he would have been the only major Democratic candidate who didn't have a loan forgiveness proposal in his campaign at the time. Hey, will you react to my opening commentary? I, I see hypocrisy. I see inconsistency. If you believe that the pandemic is such that we need to again extend this period of forbearance, then doesn't it logically follow that you also think we need to keep in place Title 42? Because after all, the pandemic is still roaring and we don't want migrants coming in who might spread COVID. I think you're exactly right. This is wildly inconsistent. My job is to talk about th these things every day. And I have a hard time even talking about this as a strategic policy initiative because it's pretty obvious to me it's just straight politics. It's getting votes in place for the midterms and maybe even beyond because I don't see anything triggering an end to this continued series of extensions.